Good afternoon, folks. I want to welcome you all to the 2022 Chancellor's Outstanding Staff Awards Ceremony. My name is Harris Mojididi. My pronouns are he and him, and I have the honor of serving as the chair of the Chancellor's Staff Advisory Committee. CSAC is a confidential advisory body that advises the Chancellor and her cabinet on a wide range of issues relating to staff and the staff experience. We're gathered here today to celebrate the many accomplishments of our dedicated staff, and I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge and celebrate our entire staff community, who over the course of the pandemic have worked tirelessly to some of our staff community's most notable achievements and how they have transformed UC Berkeley for the better. And I now have the honor of introducing a woman who needs no introduction, our fearless leader, Chancellor Christ. And I'll turn it over to you, Chancellor. Thank you, Harris. I am so delighted to greet you this afternoon. I wish we were together in person and this ceremony were really live face to face. I have every confidence next year it will be. But in the meantime, I wanna add my thanks to Harris's. Thank you so much um, for all the work that you've done in this very trying time of these two years of pandemic. I think we have just the most extraordinary staff at Berkeley. So thank you to all of you. The Chancellor's Outstanding Staff Awards acknowledges the extraordinary achievement of staff is the highest honor bestowed on staff. The criteria for receiving an award must fit in one of the following categories, commitment to fostering an equitable and inclusive community, commitment to innovation, adaptation, and efficiency, commitment to enhancing Berkeley's mission and reputation, commitment to Berkeley's sustainability goals and commitment to membership. I wanna thank the nominators who took the time to submit the letter or recommendation to acknowledge the wonderful work across campus. I wanna thank CSAC members for conducting the awards process to review the nominations, ensure winners met the criteria and to plan the awards ceremony. And then finally, thanks to the 2022 award winners for their dedication and exceptional work to make Cal a great place. And now I'd like to turn the virtual podium over to Associate Vice Chancellor of uh, HR, Human Whitlock, who is the sponsor of CSAC. Thank you very much, Chancellor Chris, and it's my pleasure to be here. So when I, I've only been at Berkeley for two and a half years and going to the COSA Awards was one of the highlights of my first few months on the job, but then we didn't have it last year. So I'm glad that we're able to do this again. And so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it and start introducing our award winners. So number one is our first award winner is Dr. Fatima Aline. Hey Fatima. <laughs> uh, Dr. Aline has almost single-handedly built a transformational diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging program for faculty and staff in the College of Engineering. Her Empower program, which consists of multiple trainings that bring faculty and staff together with community partners, has already led to significantly enhanced diversity of admitted graduate student classes and faculty applicant profiles in just the last two years. When I was chatting with Fatima and sort of asking her what inspires her to do the great work that she does, she quickly said that it's her grandfather. And her grandfather always told her that education is something that can never be taken away from you. And she sees it as her mission to make sure that she helps bring other people's stories to life. The platform and infrastructure she has built is widely seen as trailblazing for its depth, rigor, and scope. Congratulations. Our next winner is Juliana Bradley, a staff colleague who lives, lives UC Berkeley's commitment to inclusivity and equity as a colleague and mentor. She approaches each inquiry from students or colleagues with presence, dignity, and genuine care. When I talked to when I talked to her, she said she's passionate edu of education, but she views herself as more of a helper than a leader. And so she's one of those people who, who people who figures out what she can do to support other people and help them get ahead. Um, and at the root of it, similar to what Fatima said, 
It's that education is the most powerful tool that anybody can have to change the world. And again, she said to me, if you can become educated, it can't be taken away with you. In working with students, she demonstrates authentic interest in their individual goals and supports their exploration and decision making with sound knowledge of policies and protocols and informed knowledge of the intersection of health sciences. Efficient, innovative, and adaptable describe Juliana perfectly. She always makes others feel included and proactively reaches out to new staff to make sure that they have the resources they need to thrive while handling an incredible workload on her own. And she's new too. She embodies excellence as a mentor, colleague, and administrative master for students and staff. Congratulations, Juliana. The next award goes to the Berkeley Changemaker team. And we have a video from the team nominator, team nominator Richard Lyons, Innovation and Chief Innovation and Entrepreneurship Officer. Please play the video. Hello, my name is Rich Lyons. Congratulations to all the CSAC Outstanding Staff Award winners. And this is a very quick comment on Berkeley Changemaker, one of the team award winners. That team is Laura Hasner, Alex Budak, and Jay Stowski. Few thoughts. First, in less than two years, they have attracted and enrolled over 10%, some 10 to 15% of all Berkeley undergraduates in Berkeley Changemaker courses. They have uh, brought in faculty from across the whole campus. If you go to changemaker.berkeley.edu, you'll see the faculty that are involved. They're among our very best faculty. There's a summer pre-college program this summer. There is a, an alumni program that they're developing. There is the first year experience program was to be at Mills now on campus this year. That was also the narrative Berkeley Changemaker that was selected for that program. And it's proving to be remarkably inclusive, uh, attracting people from all kinds of groups in ways that a course on, for example, entrepreneurship might, might not. So congrats to them. You've done so much for our campus. We thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Sutton, he, him, his, Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. It's an honor to be here today. I want to give a shout out to CSAC for the great work that they continue to do and for hosting these annual awards. It's so important that we recognize staff for the great work that they do. Um, and I want to just congratulate all the individual winners and team winners. The next award recipient is Carrie Franzetta. Carrie is the Associate Director of the Financial Aid and Scholarships Office. She is a thoughtful and engaged colleague who works cooperatively within and across departments, playing a leading role in opening student access to Berkeley's world-class education her tireless work in the areas of fiscal management, compliance, systems development, and research has helped ensure that Berkeley stu students graduate with substantially lower debt. Topics covered in her nomination range from the academic success of low-income students to the relationship between enrollment management and financial aid modeling. Carrie has taken a hands-on approach to reviewing the methodology of CalAnswers queries that are the foundation of data calculations of great importance to our campus. The next award recipient is Holly Griffin Strauss. Inheriting a division in the financial crisis during the difficult days of the pandemic, Holly worked tirelessly to ensure that the social sciences would thrive while teaching and research went online. Holly's work during the pandemic underscores the fact that campus budgets are not merely, not merely financial statements, they're strategic plans that reflect our shared values. Holly managed to protect staffing levels, retain faculty, and serve the most diverse student body on campus. She ensured the faculty received additional training and new tools during the transition to online teaching, devised new systems to allocate instructional funds fairly, reduce the workload for staff, and consistently communicated departments that the Dean's office was there to support them. The next award goes to the California Research Alliance Industry Partnership Team. And now we present a video from the team nominator, Dr. Pei Dong Yang, a professor in the field of chemistry. Congratulations, Lizette and Ling. On behalf of the management team at California Research Alliance, I would like to thank you for your dedication and the contribution for the center in the past eight years. California Research Alliance remains to be one of the largest industrial university collaboration program on campus. And the center operates with a hub and a spokes model with the hub centered around Berkeley campus. So with this very unique operation model, 
you are not only making big impact for the Berkeley campus, you are also making great impact to the entire UC system. Again, congratulations. The next award recipient is Susan Hegstrom. Susan stepped into the manager of advising strategy and training position in January of 2020. Susan is innovative, adaptive, and has an equity oriented leadership style that has helped this community weather the challenges of the past two years. Susan provides advising support to over 1,000 students and student services professionals across campus. She updated and relaunched the Advancing Practice Workshop Series to provide opportunities for mutual mentorship, connection, and community, and a foundation for inclusive and evidence-based advising and coaching. Susan pays careful attention to addressing injustice and reducing barriers for st staff and students, promoting greater engagement, self-awareness, sensitivity, and lifelong inquiry about unconscious bias, oppression, and power dynamics. Thank you so much, Steve. I guess I'm up. Hi, everyone. My name is Dania Matos. I'm the Vice Chancellor for Equity and Inclusion. I use she, her, ella pronouns. And I just want to say congratulations to all the awardees. This is my first award celebration, and I hope it won't be the last. And as Chancellor said, I hope I get to celebrate you in person. My heart was so full reading all the extraordinary work that people are doing, but just the extraordinary people that you are. So you put the outstanding in this award celebration, and I'm excited to honor our next award recipient, uh, Alicia Hayes. Alicia annually mentors over 300 of Berkeley's top undergraduates through the process of applying for nationally and internationally competitive scholarships. In her 20 year career, I'm going to say that again, in her 20 year career, she has honed an impactful impact and empowering advising practice that values diverse pathways to higher education. While working with students, Alicia's investment is transformative. She uplifts our best and brightest students forever changing their life trajectory, their knowledge of how to leverage their skills and experience and their sense of self-worth. Extending from her advising praxis and through her leadership at the National Association of Fellowship Advisors, Alicia has used her influence to affect systemic change and to make fellowship advising more inclusive. Join me in congratulating Alicia. Our next award recipient is Gladys Cowery, Finance Director for the Bloom Center. She applies a deep domain specific expertise in finance personnel and grant administration combined with a unique understanding of the nuances of transdisciplinary research and training to provide critical support to faculty and students working to explore, ask questions, and improve the world. She has a real-world understanding of multiculturalism, the realities of people living without access to resources, both in the United States and in developing countries, and the need for women to be supported to maximize their full potential. Gladys actively seeks a diversity of opinions, making sure everyone feels heard in her meetings and supports the morale of the Bloom Center and all who interact with the center. Please join me in congratulating Gladys as well. The next award goes to the Campus Access Badge Project Team sponsored by the Executive Level COVID Recovery Management Team. Now we'll go to a video from the team nominator, Danny Green, the Director of Data Solutions. I'm Danny Grieb, the Director of Data Solutions, and I, along with Seamus Wilmot, Assistant Vice Chancellor and Executive Director of Business Operations, were honored to nominate the technical team behind the Campus Access Badge. The Campus Access Badge consolidates an individual's adherence to various campus COVID policies and indicates if that person is cleared to be on campus. It has been an essential tool as members of our community return to campus over the past many months. We are grateful for the Campus Access Badge technical team's creativity, perseverance, and exceptional teamwork in helping campus weather COVID. We're also grateful to the many partners that contributed to the project, including University Health Services and University Health Services IT, COVID Recovery and Public Health Committees, People and Culture, and many, many other technical contributors from across Berkeley IT. 
Thank you so much, Danny. Having filled out so many of those campus access badges, thank you for all the work y'all do and congratulations to the campus access badge project team. Our next award recipient is Andy Kraus at Cal Performances. The pandemic brought Andy's extraordinary invention, tenacity, and work ethic to the campus community's attention. He designed and implemented the Health Ambassadors Program for the campus, co-chaired by the Recovery Management Team's Events and External Relations Committee, and secured $7.2 million, I'm gonna say that again, $7.2 million in shuttered venue operators grants, providing solid financial footing for Cal Performances to return to live performances after the pandemic restrictions were lifted. He also served as the acting CFO and was instrumental in the launch of its successful digital platform. Anyone who has worked with Andy knows his extraordinary determination, creativity, analytical skills, and his warmth and humanity. Congratulations and join me in celebrating Andy as well. Good afternoon, I'm Rosemary Ray. I'm the Vice Chancellor of Finance. Uh, for the campus, and I am truly honored and excited to present our next award recipient, Amanda Leung, who goes above and beyond to help the Haas School recruit and attract a more diverse faculty. Amanda is inexhaustibly persistent, creative, diplomatic, and effective in supporting more inclusive and equitable recruiting practices. She brings numerous creative innovations to her work at the Haas School's Academic Searches and Recruitment, as a, at the Haas School's Academic Searches and Recruitment Analyst. Amanda helps others navigate, excuse me, I'm having trouble with my computer here. Amanda is, um, helps others navigate the, the faculty hiring systems. She has massively increased the success rate with which the Haas School recruits new faculty, her responsiveness contributes to the welfare of all of those around her. Through it all, Amanda exhibits the highest level of professionalism and diplomacy in working with faculty, job candidates, and the Dean's office, and the other staff at Haas and around campus. Please join me in, in celebrating Amanda's many accomplishments. The next award recipient is Kelly Mann. During the past few, few years, Kelly has stepped up on multiple occasions to provide campus leaders with information and alternatives to address needs at both the department level and at the campus wide level. In many cases, Kelly has supported or solely implemented actions to carry out campus decisions. Kelly has addressed needs arising as a result of COVID-19, and other dynamics on campus, including spiking growth in undergraduate enrollment, staff turnover, and reductions in campus support for the student systems training. Tal Kelly has combined his systems expertise, knowledge of campus regulations, and unwavering dedication to staff and students to provide outstanding service to the campus during this unprecedented period. Please join me in congratulating Kelly. The next award goes to the Grant Life Cycle team. And now to present uh, a video of the team is the nominator, Dr. Carol Mamora, the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Intellectual Property and Industry Research Alliances. Hello. Funding to fuel Berkeley's vast research enterprise is essential to maintain Berkeley's preeminence as a research powerhouse. It's a pleasure to be here today to recognize and to celebrate the accomplishments of the team that created an important new resource on campus, the Grant Lifecycle Portal. The portal helps researchers to understand in broad terms the process by which funding for research is obtained, who does what, how, when, and how it all fits together and how research administration works. These are complicated transactions that are performed across different units on campus and the grant lifecycle portal is now an essential campus tool. 
The team designed the portal from the point of view of the user using the phrase, how do I, as the fundamental design element. In the past, information was scattered and each office's website described its own tasks. The portal now provides all of this in one coherent overview. The team effort consists of members from several different units and exemplifies the art of purpose-driven, multidisciplinary collaboration. I'm so proud to be their colleague and please join me in thanking them for their extraordinary accomplishment. Let me also add my thanks, gratitude, and uh, sense of awe for what the grant lifecycle team has accomplished. The next award recipient is, is Keith McClear, who has been described as one of the most innovative, adaptive, and efficient staff members on campus. After joining the Industrial Engineering and Operations Research Department, he quickly took on additional responsibilities, leading a number of new initiatives that dramatically increased interaction among students, staff, faculty, and the department. Keith has also expanded the range and diversity of topics taught at UC Berkeley and enhanced the reputation of the department. Keith played a crucial role in redesigning the department's public facing information to highlight the cutting edge research, teaching and learning opportunities that are available. Since Keith's arrival to the industrial engineering and operations research department, enrollment has grown by a magnificent 80%. Please join me in welcoming, uh, in, in honoring Key's many accomplishments. Keep up the great uh, news there in the chat. It's fun to see people congratulating each other. This is a wonderful community event. The next award recipient is Cristobal Olivares. So, so Steve, I'm gonna interrupt you because okay. I'm back. You're back, great. I'm back. I am sorry I disappeared like that before. I wanna make it clear it was my home internet and had nothing to do with Berkeley IT. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next award recipient is Cristobal Olivares. Uh, Cristobal demonstrates a commitment to ensuring that UC Berkeley is an equitable, inclusive, and just environment for everyone. He builds community for the Black, Indigenous, and Latinx staff across One IT, as well as bridges to leadership to enhance and improve the experiences of the staff under them. So I had a chance to chat with Cristobal this morning, and he said, Eugene, I'm going to give you real talk. Because I asked him, why do you do this? As I asked everybody, he said, when I showed up in IT three years ago, I looked around the room didn't see anybody like me. It felt pretty isolating. And I could have just quit and gone on to find another job or I could have done something about it. And what he chose to do is find ways to create community for people like him who are historically underrepresented in IT services. His great initiative to create and sustain a much needed resource at the height of the pandemic and during the recent social unrest has benefited countless staff. Congratulations, Cristobal. Next award recipient is Julia Snippen. In 2020, on top of her full-time work as a development officer for the Haas School of Business, Julia became co-chair of the Berkeley Advancement Community and proactively recruited new members for its executive committee to build diversity and better represent the wide range of experiences across the Cal Advancement Community. Julia comes from a family of public service, so for her, it was natural to find work that had meaning. Otherwise, what's the point of doing it? That's what, that's Julia's words, not mine. And so when I asked her about her work on the committee, she was a co-chair on the committee. And at the first executive committee meeting, she sort of looked around the room and said, you know, the people in this room, they're not representative of the people on our campus who are doing this kind of work. I'm going to actually say something. And she spoke up and was greeted by colleagues with, with grace and thankfulness that she actually said something. And so I asked Julia how she found the courage to actually speak up and say something in that somewhat intimidating environment. And she actually said she did a courageous conversation course. And that sort of inspired her to have the courage in that moment to speak up. And so training club, courageous conversations, it's a good thing to do. So Julia has played a crucial role in conceiving and developing a number of diversity, equity, and inclusion workshops for the Haas development and alumni relations teams. Julia bravely calls out the detrimental effects of racism 
and encourages colleagues to recognize where racism exists in our own systems. In addition to her work within the hospital. Okay, I will try to finish that for you, Julia. Julia bravely calls out the detrimental effects of racism and encourages colleagues to recognize where racism exists in our own systems. In addition to her work within the Haas community, she has successfully collaborated with colleagues across campus to help the university achieve its fundraising and philanthropic goals. Congratulations, Julia. The next award goes to the library course e-reserves design and implementation team, recognized for the remarkable tenacity, collaboration, and innovation. And now we present a video from the team nominators, Salwa Ishmael and Beth Dupuy. Hi, I'm Salva Ismail. And I'm Beth Dupuy. On behalf of the University Library, we're thrilled to celebrate the library course e-reserves design and implementation team. Lillian, Molly, Mark, Jenny, Chrissy, David, and Lynn. As winners of the Chancellor's Outstanding Award. This team demonstrated incredible leadership, creativity, and collaborative problem solving. Together, they led an even larger team of library staff to adapt the print course reserves service for an all digital environment, continuing to support student learning through the pandemic. Their ability to accomplish this work during an extremely stressful time is a testament to their commitment to our students, faculty, and the university's mission. Great, Great work, work and congratulations. congratulations. The next award recipient is Phil Stilson. Phil is sought out by others as a strategic, strategic thought partner for his contributions to impactful initiatives that have transformed the student information systems organization. Phil is recognized for his ability to have an eye for big picture initiatives that balance the strengths of others and provide benefits to campus. Phil also exhibits unwavering commitment to grow and develop others. Phil is an empathetic leader who willingly invests time, energy, and resources into the development of his team and peers. He embodies remarkable leadership by nourishing the talents of staff across the organization and advocating for equitable compensation and opportunities. The next award recipient is Jessica Thatch. Jessica is an outstanding leader within the Center for Educational Partnerships. Jessica has created resource, data resources and initiated department-wide conversations about the impact of data analysis in historically marginalized communities. Her commitment to innovating data analysis resources to make them accessible and efficient ensures that the Center for Educational Partnership staff can connect their services to the larger landscape of college access and higher education. Jessica is celebrated for her exceptional efforts supporting the professional development of underrepresented first-generation professionals and students through mentorship, resource banks, headshots, and ongoing data training. The next award recipient, is Gary Thomas. Gary has acted as the change leader in upgrading the entire campus Wi-Fi network through the use of new technologies, improved business processes, creativity, and initiative. Gary has enabled the university to have a more efficient and effective Wi-Fi network. This has included installing, configuring, and putting in production a brand new Wi-Fi management and control system and managing the upgrade of 8,000 plus wireless access points on campus since 2018. Gary's efforts have made UC Berkeley a top tier partner with Aruba Networks and a trusted and valued member of the Aruba family, including innovate, invitations to speak and participate in multiple Aruba forums. The next award recipient is the Optometry Online Education, Continuing Education Team. And now we present a video of the team nominators, Pam Sachawatrafong, Assistant Clinical Professor, and Annie Taskai, Assistant Clinical Professor. Hello, I'm Dr. Pam Satchatwacharat Pong. And I'm Dr. Ann Tasaki. We are Assistant Clinical Professors at the Herbert Wertheim School of Optometry and Vision Science and co chairs of our Continuing Education Committee. We nominated our school's Continuing Education and Event Team for the Chancellor's Outstanding Staff Award for their innovation during the COVID 19 pandemic. Prior to the pandemic, our team provided three annual in-person continuing education events, primarily to alumni and optometrists in California. These events are necessary for doctors of optometry to maintain their licensure. 
With the onset of COVID restrictions, these in-person offerings dropped dramatically across the nation. So our team quickly pivoted to create a new initiative from the ground up to deliver high quality didactic online continuing education courses via webinars, on demand and hybrid courses. This also allowed our team to expand our offerings to optometrists nationwide who otherwise may not have been able to travel to our in-person events. In its first year, the team was able to deliver more than 80 hours of continuing education to over 2,400 optometrists. This was a tremendous service to our profession in a very challenging time. So we'd like to congratulate the team, which includes our program director, Matthew Kaminsky, our instructional designer, Catherine McChrystal, and our program coordinator, Elizabeth Yuen, for receiving this year's Chancellor's Outstanding Staff Award. We thank you all for your dedication, hard work, flexibility and innovation. Cheers to this well-deserved award. The next award recipient is Amanda Tran. Amanda goes above and beyond to make the law school equitable and welcoming for students, faculty and staff alike. From being a nearly one woman exams department to her work on the staff circle on anti-racism to her contributions to student services, community building activities, she is dedicated to supporting students and improving the law school environment. Thank you for your unflappable, impressive, thoughtful approach to your role. Thank you so much, Steve. I don't know about you, but I keep looking for the applause button. So I'm waiting for the button where we go, yay! So I'm in the background saying woohoo! So our next award recipient is Claudia Trujillo, an exemplary administrator dedicated to the mission of making physics accessible to all students. Um, physics was hard, Claudia, for me. So thank you for doing that. She pioneered approaches to address pressing challenges such as imposter syndrome and stereotype threat. She had developed a course specifically for transfer students piloted for the last two fall semesters with great success. She also co-founded the Physics Staff for Action on Racial Justice woohoo, to create an equitable and ethical environment. And she created the Physics Latinx Community Group. She joined the MPS Dean's Task Force on Undergraduate Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, tasked with evaluating data on STEM students and retention, receiving a $3 million grant, I'll say that again, $3 million grant from the Moore Foundation for the Mathematical Physics Sciences Scholars Program. Claud Claudia also launched a very successful initiative, the Revenue Generating Berkeley Physics International Education Program. Congratulations, Claudia. Our next award recipient is Gia White. During her career, Gia has actively created an inclusive and welcoming environment for diverse individuals and groups and has dedicated herself to fostering historical awareness, both at a community level and on our campus. The celebration of the 150th anniversary of the admission of women to the University of California triggered Gia's interest in the whereabouts and significance of African-American women on the Berkeley campus. She developed on her own initiative and without any funding, wow Gia, <laughs> a research project that allowed her to uncover a wealth of information. The publication of her research findings on the Berkeley website allowed the Berkeley community to become aware of these African-American women trailblazers and their time on campus, their stories and their remarkable journeys. Thank you for uplifting their voices, Gia, and we celebrate you, congratulations. The next award is presented to the Dismantling Anti-Black Racism Team. Woohoo! This work group at University Health Services has assisted in deconstructing and reshaping policies, procedures, and systemic barriers rooted in white supremacy in order to create racial equity, to foster understanding and empathy, and to increase, increase access to opportunities for Black staff and students. This team engaged in challenging conversations, gathered input, conducted analysis to identify gaps, collaborated with other teams, put forth recommendations for short and long-term anti-racism activities, and co-organized a retreat. Through thoughtful research and information gathering, honest conversations, and deep emotional labor, this team is leading the way for UHS to be an anti-racist organization that creates well-being for Black and African-American staff and clients a deep, immense appreciation for all the hard work to all the members of their team and for their work. Our next award recipient, 
I'm like, where's the applause button? <laughs> is Victoria Williams. For many undergraduates and language teaching faculty, the first person they encounter in the Berkeley Language Center is Victoria. She will greet them with a smile, inquire if they need something and help them to find it which includes everything from Zoom instructions to where they can set up a Skype call for an interview with an Estonian radio station. Her engagement is not only fulfilling, about fulfilling a need, it is about developing a relationship, one that is based on respect and cooperation with the goal of ensuring that everyone realizes their fullest potential. On campus, Victoria is actively involved in LGBTQ plus organizing, most notably through Lavender Cal, she was recognized for this work in 2020 as part of the 150th Years of Women at Berkeley project. Woohoo, Victoria, congratulations to you. Before I go on, I have to say how truly inspired I am by all of the award win winners. Congratulations, it's just amazing. The next award recipient is Laura Wolf. Laura has sharpened the Berkeley Center for New Media's focus on indigenous issues, greatly improving our public events, accessibility and inclusivity, and supported student success in a myriad of ways. She administered the launch of the indigenous tech program, including facilitating an ongoing relationship with local indigenous nonprofits. While transitioning public lectures from in-person to online, Due to the pandemic, she ensured all events were captions, simulcast, and posted on YouTube afterward, and also coordinated a slate of speakers that consisted of 80% BPOC scholars, allowing us to offer highly diverse programming and attract diverse attendees from all over the world. She also recently created two key grant programs that support student research and that helped high financial needs students navigate the COVID-19 emergency. Congratulations, Laura. The next award recipient is Teresa Yu. Under Teresa's leadership, the Green Initiative Fund has prolific success in funding and supporting sustainability projects on campus. From 2019 to 21, she led the planning committee with an equitable and inclusive process to grant over $1 million to 72 campus initiatives, many of which prioritize environmental justice. Teresa provides oversight and advising to groups applying for and receiving funding and has helped uplift many of these still active projects to success. Teresa's work exemplifies her moral grounding in the values of inclusion and equitable community engagement. Teresa pioneered the inaugural first and second years of the Brian Gialetis, I hope I got that right, uh, Sierra Queer Leader Scholarship, which has awarded 10 $1,000 scholarships to queer environmentalists. Congratulations, Teresa. The next award is for the University Health System's Transgender Care Team. And now we present a video from the team nominator, Peter Cornish from the University Health Services Department. Greetings from University Health Services. First of all, thank you to the Chancellor for honoring this important work. And of course, special thanks to the phenomenal UHS transgender clinical team working together to provide a holistic wraparound full continuum of programming to transgender students. The team includes passionate, dedicated primary care providers, nurses, psychologists, social workers, sports medicine doctors, and psychiatric providers. This, grand break, this groundbreaking program has become a model for many other campuses because of its reach, comprehensiveness, and student-centric approach. Students have agency in the care process, including the ability to choose their provider. We've learned from students that easy access and the capacity to honor preferences are highly valued. Services offered include general primary care, 
prescribing and monitoring hormones, specialized care for student athletes, reproductive and sexual health care, transgender affirmative counseling, mental health readiness assessment for gender affirming surgeries, teachings for UHS staff, and collaboration with off-campus providers. Congratulations team. We also want to express our deep appreciation for members of the UHS transgender leadership team who work behind the scenes at an administrative level to ensure all the non-clinical aspects of a transgender student's experience at the Tang Center is exceptional. You make us all proud. A hearty virtual round of applause for the University Health Services transgender care team. Hey there, folks. So we had a little bit of technical difficulties earlier, so we're going to go back to one of our awardees, Temple Byers. And so I'll go ahead and Temple, I'm going to read um, your recognition. So this next recipient is Temple Byers, an exemplary mentor and staff member who skillfully manages an inclusive and diverse informal working group. Her founding and facilitation of the weekly Schedulers Unite group was not meant to be a formal community of practice, but it turned into a lifeline to curriculum managers, both old and new. Temple's skillful facilitation Utilizing an inclusive and open communicative style makes these weekly sessions immensely useful to the on the ground practitioners and cultivates a feeling of connectivity and community at Cal for staff across all the colleges. So thank you so much, Temple. I just want to recognize you. Thank you. And gosh, as we close for today, uh, my heart is full. I am so grateful and honored to be in community with staff members who are changing the world each and every day and and on that note before we wrap up today i owe such a huge thanks and gratitude to the cosa committee who have worked so tirelessly these past eight months to put this award ceremony together and we have had so many so much has come up delta omicron and we've had to tailor our our program, but I really want to highlight our COSA committee chairs, Amir Karkia, Tanya Kroyan, and our COSA committee, Nicole McIntyre and Alyssa Panyawe Kurt. And they're actually in this room, and I would like to have them join me. They're going to turn my background off because they have been working behind the scenes weekly to put this put this event together. And they, again, they this is a volunteer. CSAC is all volunteer and these are the folks that have put this program on. And so again, we are so grateful to be in community with all of you and go Bears. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you all. We wish you a great rest of the day. <laughs>